We would like to now begin our services. Uh, anyone who would like to come to make remarks at the required time, please come to this side of the podium. Thank you, and we'll now begin. Again, welcome, my brothers and sisters, as we have gathered on this first Friday in the month of January, the new year of our Lord 2024, to celebrate the life and spirit, the contributions and deeds of this, our departed brother and comrade, Brother Stephen Augustus Whiteley. Uh, we come in an effort to not only lift up our words of thanksgiving for his life and spirit, but we also come as a tangible presence of support and encouragement to this family in the midst of this challenging time in their lives. I invite you to open up your minds, your hearts, just your spirits, and allow the spirit of the living God to enter therein to comfort and console us as we lift up the songs of Zion, as we lift up the Holy Scriptures as a source of comfort, even as we lift up our prayers uh, for further comfort and consolation. The opening selection will be led by our organist, Brother Gregory Allen, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine. Those of you who uh, know this hymn of the faith, certainly are invited to join us as we lift our voices together as one. <laughs> Recited with me. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restored my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemies, thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy 
shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. From the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 14, verses 1, 2, and 3. Let not your hearts be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Here ends the reading of the scriptures of comfort. May God continue to comfort as well as console us in this time of worship. <clears throat> Let us pray together. Lord, thou who hast been our dwelling place from generation to generation, thou who art our refuge and our shelter in the times of the storms of life, we draw near and nigh unto you in this moment, O oh God, simply crying out of the depths of our souls, Lord, have mercy upon us. For well, we've come to thank you for the life and spirit of this our departed brother. All is well with him, for he has made his transition of this journey on the earth. But we pray for each and every member of the family and the wider family, the wider community, all who have been affected by his transition. Those, O oh God, who have deep and long uh, relationships with him. You know how their hearts have been broken, even the aching heart in these moments. But we pray, O oh Spirit of the living God, that you would descend upon us even in these moments. Do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. Hold us ever near, O oh God. Comfort and console. Remind us that what you have done has not been out of anger or madness, but if we live, we too will die. For the scriptures remind us to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Be in our singing, be in our praying, be in our preaching, and may all that we do and say give honor and glory unto you. In the name of Jesus the Christ we pray. Amen. <clears throat> At this time, we will have the acknowledgement of uh, condolences and resolution. Is there a member of the family assigned to do that? Okay. On behalf of the family, let me just express uh, words of gratitude and appreciation, not only for the presence of each and every one of you, uh, but also for those of you who took the time to send uh, condolences, whether uh, sympathy cards or resolutions from various organizations uh, and as well as to offer gratitude on behalf of the family for your ongoing prayers as well as your calls and visits uh, prior to the death of, of Brother White and uh, following his death and pray that you will continue to keep them in your prayers in the days to come as well as visit with them and, and reach out with them, unto them as well. God bless you and so keep you. As we continue to celebrate the life of Brother White, uh, now we would invite the family members and friends uh, to come forth and share words of, words of comfort or reflections or, or remarks at, at this time. Uh, and we would ask that you would observe the uh, two-minute limit. Family members and friends, won't you come forward and share at this time? <clears throat> What's up, everybody? Um, you know, one thing I... Uh, 
kind of, I always remember about Uncle Steve and Papa. I was like, I kind of, when we was living on grass streets, I kind of thought of them like salt and pepper. Like, I, never, I never really experienced like how brothers, how somebody could be brothers and they look so different. Like Papa, you know, is light skin and Uncle Steve is dark skin. But, uh, you know, something I'm going to always remember is like their diet. Um, <laughs> they, you know, they, they have big bellies and like, you know, all the food they eat, they eat like chicken feet, pig feet, <laughs> gizzards, like just, and I used to look at that food and I used to be like, how do you eat that stuff? <laughs> you know, it looks so, this, you know, so just distasteful to me. And, um, you know, that's, that's just what I remember and, you know, just sad to see him go, but, you know, I'm happy to be in a better place now and not, you know, going through what he was going through, so. No, I've never had the honor or pleasure of meeting Uncle Steve, um, but in my short time of coming into this family, um, I've heard a lot of stories about it, and, uh, you know, so I'm on the baby, but at the same time, you know, each of us are, uh, are, are perfect, I'm saying we've all had our right. issues or things that we've, and people will call questionable, but at the end of the day, this we're all, we're all going to land here, yeah. mm. in, a, in this place right here, so, you know, I just feel like he's a, he's a man of worthy of being loved, yeah. regardless of what his life did or whatever happened in his life. And I think we all want to get to a place where like said, we love and we can leave behind some memories that, are, that have touched or moved somebody. Mm -hmm. I mean, the fact that you're here, he's done something in your life to yeah. cause you to be here today. Yeah. So I would just say, you know, the way we conduct ourselves and the way we live our lives is very important. You know, to love one another, to forgive and respect one another, you know, that's important. Because at the end of the day, when I'm laying here, I would hope I got this, this many people there for me. Oh, you know, so I just you know, encourage you guys to continue to live your lives the best life that you can live, be respectful, honorable, and you know, a life of love. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. I put some pressure on them. First, I'll use my teacher voice. I use that very well. So um, anyone who knows me and knows my uncle, we had a love-hate relationship. Um, but uh, I believe I'm doing what's right on behalf of my father, my grandmother, and his son, little Steve, who passed, um, believe it or not, I think it was 23 years ago. Mm. So with that being said, these last couple of months, um, he was in a skilled nursing facility. And I would go up there to see him. And every time I would see him, he would just break out in the biggest smile. Like, so no matter what we fought about previously, because we had many fights. Um, I remember one time I woke up in the morning and he had broke my couch. <laughs> I was like, no, he didn't. But he was smart enough to leave before I saw him. So uh, when I, I was like, I, my dad was there. And I said, Dad, I'm going to look, look, the couch got a flat. Like, literally, it was like on an angle. And so, um, you know, I was angry at that time, but now you think about it, that was nothing. The couch is nothing. You can get a new couch, which we eventually did. But um, I was just saying that he was so happy to see me, and he was so happy to see Brian. And I'll just say, in full transparency, if it wasn't for Brian, he wouldn't have made it this long. Brian went to intervene when he just was not living in the best conditions. And I'll never forget, Brian said, Jennifer, I have to take him to the hospital. And I, and 
I said, you put them in my car? I remember I said that. I did say that. <laughs> he said, yeah. And I, I said, Jennifer, that ain't nothing but the devil making you think that. But um, I thank you for that because if that didn't happen, we probably wouldn't have had um, these last couple of years. So um, that really, his life was extended because of you. Okay. Um, and yes, and God, but you know, God sent you to intervene, right? Mm -hmm. God sent you to intervene. So um, just want to thank everyone for being here. I appreciate all of you. Um, you know, you just, you never think that you'll have the task of planning a funeral. Of, of, sometimes things just come your way that you don't expect. And um, I just hope that I made him proud. So uh, thank you all. Amen. All right. Um, <laughs> What I got to say is, I know they had, Jennifer and Uncle Steve had a little issue, but he, I mean, he loved Jennifer, right? Mm -hmm. And I know that, because he never, ever said anything bad about you, you know, to me. But, you know, he just was a bully, you know, police officer, <laughs> you know, like, bullied everybody, you know? And I just remember him being a cop before we even met. He used to be down 30th and Gerard at Nisi, eating beans. He loved to eat. And we used to be down there in the hood, I'd go through there, He'd be staying out there with his uniform on. And he just, you know, he just tried to bully everybody. But he really was soft inside and tried to put the persona on. But, you know, he, he would, then when me, this would be for me and Jennifer even started talking. And then he started telling us some stories about me. Like, I said, what are you trying to do, man? You know, I, I seen that guy down 29th, 30th Street. You should have to break it down. But we wound up getting real tight, man. I know he loved his family. So that's why I honor him. Thank y'all for coming. <laughs> Thank these who have come and, and shared. Now we will turn to the uh, obituary. <coughs> The obituary, as is, as is printed in our program, very quietly and mercifully on Wednesday, December 27th, 2023. Excuse me. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry about that. First mistake I made. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So very quietly, quite, we're very quietly and mercifully on Wednesday, December 27, 2023, Almighty God in his entire wisdom gently called our beloved father, uncle, cousin, and loving friend to enter his eternal kingdom and be restored to his glorious presence. On February 12, 1952, Stephen Augustus White was born to the late Hattie Lorraine Clarkson and Charles Edward White Jr. in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Steve, or Big Steve, was, as he was affectionately known, was educated in the Philadelphia public school system. At a young age, he worked alongside his father and older brother as a proud, dedicated employee of C. White and Sons Construction Company. He was tasked to assist with several big projects with the city of Philadelphia through the leadership and guidance of the W. Wilson Good, of W. Wilson Good. Upon graduation, he worked briefly for the United States Postal Service before becoming one of the original and last officers of the Fairmount Park Guard Police on March 29, 1971. He soon transitioned to the Philadelphia Police Department and continued to work out of the 90th District Fairmount Park, serving 32 years before retiring August 25, 2020, uh, 2003. Stephen had many talents and enjoyed eating good food, watching television, and working in both construction and demolition. Throughout his life, he continued to pursue demolition projects and could often be seen riding his backhoe, filling his dump truck, and plowing streets after winter storms. Stephen, well, Steve was wholeheartedly a warm and adoring father. From the day of his son, Stephen Augustus White Jr., little Steve was born on December 15, 1982, 
he was in love. There was nothing he could he would not do for his son, from teaching him at an early age how to operate heavy construction equipment, <coughs> to ensuring he attended and, and graduated from the top schools in the city of Philadelphia. <coughs> now Big Steve and Little Steve are together, again rejoicing in God's eternal kingdom. Steve had a devout love for a family and enjoyed traveling. He was often the uncle, cousin, or friend who showed up to the cookout and never wanted to leave. <laughs> he spent significant time in Delaware visiting his older brother Charles, staying with his cousins, the Taylor brothers of Columbia, South Carolina, and enjoying the sights and sounds of the Dominican Republic. In his last days, our uncle, cousin, and friend Steve was extremely grateful for the love and support of his family and friends. He often showed his thanks with a great big smile to his niece Jennifer and nephew-in-law Brian. He was very appreciative of the people taking care of him. Steve's life was, uh, his Steve's life's testimony will be his unconditional love for his son and service towards all, the, all who cross his path. Steve leaves to, leaves to cherish in his memory his adoring niece, uh, Dr. Jennifer D. Alexander, Brian K. Alexander, his nephew David Ford, Rena Waters, Waters Ford, uh, as well as as well as numerous cousins and a host of other relatives and friends. Peacefully submitted to family. Let the people of God say amen. amen. It is with thanksgiving and appreciation on behalf of the family that we express further words of gratitude for these who have come and shared during this time of homegoing celebration for their loved one, Stephen Augustus White. Thank you for enlarging the uh, obituary and helping us to uh, have a further feel for the character and personality of Brother Stephen and helping all of us to remember from whence we have come and to look back and say, who would have thought, even in 2023, let alone 2024, that uh, pig feet and chicken feet, uh, chicken livers and chicken gizzards, as well as chitlin, stuff that we threw away, that was throwaway food, would become such a delicatessen that uh, if you can find it, even in this day and time, the price is so high that you can hardly afford it. But chicken livers, chicken gizzards, chicken feet, pig feet that sustain so many of us in our journey. Now we can hardly uh, afford it. <laughs> Look where we have come from, how God has blessed us. And, and the truth be told, uh, more people of other color by them than black folk do. <laughs> yes, yes indeed. Thank you for reminding me as well as others <laughs> from whence we have come and how God has blessed us and kept us to, to this day. Remember the stories of, about Stephen and share them uh, with one another. Not only do they make you laugh, but they also hopefully serve as a source of inspiration and courage as you continue in the journey. There is something from his life that can serve as a, a motivator. Shakespeare reminded us long ago that we often inter the good and we lift up the bad. But the eulogy by itself, this service of, of celebration, life celebration, is to lift up uh, the positive. Uh, to give thanks for the angelic qualities, if you will, uh, of one. As was mentioned, all of us are human beings, and thereby we are striving for perfection. Not one of us has reached perfection in this life, but we are all striving. And someone said further, blessed are the flexible, for they shall not be bent out of shape. <laughs> blessed are the flexible for they shall not be bent out of shape. All of us have our shortcomings. All of us get on one another's nerves at one point or another. And, and as I say, 
uh, my folks just lay on my nerves. <laughs> they just lay on my nerves. <clears throat> As I had some moment to talk with this beloved niece, Jennifer, uh, in addition to what is lifted up uh, in the obituary, uh, a couple of things uh, stand out uh, about the life of, of Brother Stephen that, that I share with you at, at this time. Um, one, <clears throat> that word service comes back one time after another, whether he was working in the construction demolition industry or serving as a police officer. You don't get around service. Uh, those of you who are familiar with the uh, Philadelphia police uh, motto, vision, it says honor, service, and integrity. Throughout Stephen's life, whether he was working in the construction demolition business or serving as a Philadelphia police officer or even as an officer in the Fairmount Park system. It was about service unto others, helping others, assisting others, caring for others, as well as uh, protecting others. And you have somewhat alluded to that in your remarks this morning. I'm reminded, and I'm sure all of us at one day, one time, in our driving life have entered a construction zone uh, where there were slowdowns, where there were detours uh, because of heavy equipment, trucks, uh, stops, and all kind of dust, and there were bumpy conditions. Uh, I know different than many of you entered that construction zone more than one time. And at the end of the construction zone, after you go through all of the dust and the bumpy, difficult road conditions, you reach a point where the pavement is smoothed out. And there is a sign that caught my attention and hopefully yours along the way that says, end of construction. Thanks for your patience. We, it occurred to me, my sisters and brothers, that in this life, we are all under construction, no different than Stephen was. We are all under construction. From the moment that we enter this world, we begin a lifelong process of physical, mental, and spiritual growth. This beautiful young uh, baby girl that's with us this morning, ever how beautiful her smile and ever how innocent and naive she is, she has entered that process. She will continue to grow and develop no different than all of us. Uh, sales will begin, sales will die. Sales will begin, sales will die. That's an ongoing process to the moment that we draw our last breath. Bottom line, God moves the dirt around in our lives, <clears throat> no different than the heavy equipment, the back holes, and the tractors and the trucks, they move the dirt around. God moves the dirt of our life around to construct something beautiful. And we have drawn together this day to say thank you, God, for the way that you move the dirt around in Stephen's life. For this beautiful thing, even though he got on our nerves at times, even though he, he made us mad, but now we look back and we say, oh, God was working in his life and I didn't even realize it. So that we understand the saying, be patient with me, my brother, be patient with me, my sister. God is doing something and he has not finished with me as yet. Through every experience of life, the good, the bad, the ugly, the indifferent, the unusual, the unique, God is molding and shaping us into something that he would have us to be. We may not 
always be able to see it, even in our most optimistic and positive attitude towards someone, we hope they're going to get better. They hope, we hope they're going to do different. But we're not always able to see or to know what God is doing until after the fact. So that all of us, good, bad, or indifferent, are on the same page this morning that God has created something wonderful, something beautiful out of our beloved brother, uh, father, uncle, relative, Stephen Augustus White. Mm -hmm. And we lift our voices to say thank you, Lord, for what you have done. And thank you, Lord, for having allowed me to be around at this point to witness as, as much. So, my sisters and brothers, the other day, as the record has indicated, on the 27th of December, it was the master of the construction company that entered the room of Stephen Augustus White. And after he had surveyed this project that he had worked on, moved the dirt around for more than 70 years, uh, simply said, it is beautiful. And this is something that I can own and that this is something that I need in the heavenly ranks with me. And with that, my sisters and brother, brother Stephen was, was gone from these earthly shores. As John said, as he recorded of Jesus, that I'm going away to prepare a place for you. And one day I'm going to return and, re and take you to that place that I have created. So with that, in his last words, can't you hear Stephen saying in his own way, if I can help somebody as I pass along, if I can cheer somebody with a word or a song, if I can show somebody how they are traveling wrong, then my living shall not be in vain. Yes, my living shall not be in vain. Then my living shall not be in vain. If I can help somebody as I pass along, then my living shall not be be in vain. To God be the glory for whom he has given and whom he has constructed into a, a beautiful thing. Praise God, praise God, praise God, and to God be the glory forever and forever we pray. Amen. Amen. would like to thank Pastor Blanks for the ministry that he's provided to us as well as our musician Mr. Gregory Allen. We are now about to have our final viewing and we're going to ask that you please remain in your seats until we come to your row. Uh, once you have viewed you can return to your seat as we will have the committal service which is just a brief uh, word right after uh, our final viewing. Uh, indicated on your program, I don't recall the address. Would somebody repeat the address for the repast, please? It's um, at Blue Brook. 56601 Lancaster. 56501 Lancaster. 5610. 5610 Lancaster Avenue, Blue Brook Banquet Facility. Immediately following our final viewing and committal service. Thank you.
Lord, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And now, unto the mercy of Almighty God, we commend the spirit of our departed brother, Stephen Augustus White, and commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, looking for the general resurrection at the last day when those who die in the Lord shall be raised to eternal glory and an endless life of joy and peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth, yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. Let us pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with each of you, now and always. Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask everyone to please rise as we recess. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believeth in me, though he dies.